G'day everybody, welcome to this vMix Studio Tour 2019. Now that we've moved into our studio and new offices, we thought we would put together a video. So uh, behind me we have a couple of offices here upstairs, we have another lot of offices downstairs for everybody else, but up here we kind of have uh, our studio and a bunch of other stuff set up. So. It's a bit hard, there's no real blueprint on how to build a studio, so because we have offices and toilets and um, kitchens and all that kind of stuff that we need to add to our you know, general workplace, uh, it's kind of a bit hard to build a custom built studio, but we've done our best uh, and so hopefully, uh, yeah, it's going to serve us well. It has served us well so far, so you can go back and have a look at the last videos from the last studio tour from our old place uh, and yeah, we had to move for various reasons. If you see me in person, feel free to ask me exactly why we had to move. Uh, so yeah, anyway, so over here we have a laboratory, I guess you could call it. This is where Martin spent most of, most of his time making a mess and doing all sorts of stuff. So we have computers on computers on computers for days. So we have Windows 7, Windows 10, uh, all kinds of graphics cards, uh, AMD stuff, um, NUX, you name it, we've got it in here. Um, as Martin showed you just then, we had the petrol price out the window. So you can check out the Friday Abbott petrol prices on our Facebook page where we live stream our petrol prices. Martin showing you a little studio that we had set up as an SRT demo for IBC uh, in Amsterdam. So we just have a bunch of stuff going on in there, just like all sorts of uh, crazy stuff for testing. Um, we like to test everything. I know that sounds crazy. Um, some companies might not like to test everything, but we get emails on emails on emails um, asking for you know recommendations and guides as to whether things are going to work and we like to actually know whether they're going to work or not um, so over here we have kind of the studio area for the actual studio and the sets so we have our studio pc that you'll see on all of our live streams when we talk about it this is our uh, obsidian system that we have we have our audio gear here um, on this table and um, we have some other stuff on these walls here, just gear, basically cameras, boxes, all sorts of stuff. Over here, broken televisions, as you do. Um, so yeah, you'll notice that we have things outside of the studio, like there's a big wall here. So we have everything coming through the wall from the studio via these holes in the wall. So we have a couple of holes in the walls that we send the cabling through from the other side. Now that allows us to kind of keep the noise away from the, uh, the studio that we have set up in there. So here we have a lot of our video routing. So that way when we have video coming from the cameras, we don't have to have this computer on all the time. We can just route the video however we like via SDI, HDMI. So we have a, a couple of other um, things in there as well, like HD base T and that sort of thing. So I'll go over that a little bit later. So yeah, we kind of have separated, it gives us the ability to keep the noise away from this server. Now, you'll notice we have a couple of our industry awards here. Sure, they're not voted by the readers, but you know, what would you prefer to have, industry or... Re anyway. <coughs> um, so anyway, let's go and have a look at our studios. So this is the... I guess it's one studio, but two sets. So this is kind of... Uh, yeah, the two sets that we have. So this over here is the vMix Funtime Live Show, and this over here is the tutorial studio that I decided to build. One cool thing about the actual studio itself is that this door is properly sealed all around the edges, but it also has a latch down the bottom here that turns, opens and shuts a flap that kind of seals the room. So when I shut the door, it's nice and quiet. So um, I like to sit in here alone um, with my thoughts, you know, as you do in this nice quiet room. So it's fairly fairly quiet. So yeah, as I mentioned before, it's a bit hard to uh, build a studio when you kind of, you know, you have to have all of this other workspace stuff. So this room is a little bit interesting. It's got a slanted roof. It's got a very tall roof, which is good and bad. If you remember when we first moved in, we had windows all around the edges of the studio in, in like this particular part of the, the office. So we filled in all of these windows to kind of create a, an ability to get rid of the sound. We had drapes at the last place and they were just cumbersome and they just didn't really work. So now we block these out. We have a train that runs by the back uh, and we can't hear it. And also uh, it's good to have moved because then we don't have people going to the Bottolo on a Friday afternoon. So we don't hear them doing burnouts down the road. So this is the vMix Funtime Live Show set. We need to have a better name for it. Um, maybe the Overkill set or the Overkill Studios is what I think we should call our, our studios here because we kind of 
spent a lot of money on it because people expect certain things, like they want to know that they can do 4K60. So we have to have all the 4K60 equipment and they want to know what kind of NDI stuff they can do and what sort of things they can do. So Overkill Studios is kind of like the nickname for the, uh, the whole thing. And you'll notice here, back on the wall, this wall wasn't here previously, so this is a new wall. All this stuff is new. We put in a cable tray. Uh, and we also put in these holes, as I mentioned. We've got a guy here who eats all our cables. He, um, they could go over this cable tray from the vMix Funtime live show set, and it kind of keeps everything off the ground. We've got a terrible occupational health and safety record. Um, you know, those signs. We took down the sign that says we haven't had an accident for X amount of days because we never didn't have an accident. So um, we decided to put in a truss. So we've got a massive three by three meter truss here that we thought would be a good idea and it has been pretty good for us so it's kept all of the cabling off the ground as you can see all the cable is cabling is hanging and allows us to kind of mount stuff and have everything on the um, the truss itself now we weren't quite sure what to do we had a look at a lot of people's studios we saw the the live streaming pros that do a lot of uh, studio installs and they had a, a quite a few truss systems that they were using and it's it's really good for being able to hang things off cameras lights cables all that kind of stuff and it's good for chin-ups as well if you really want to do that kind of thing so yeah that is the truss system that we have it's uh very heavy and you can hang like tons and tons of gear off it which is really good so i'm going to stop talking about hanging now at the back here you can see this is the back side of the the studio these came with us they're not really all that great. They're used for hanging our televisions. We've got a couple of new t TVs that we've, we've got here. You'll notice that we have a lot of cabling coming over. So we have these cables, uh, network cables that we've got plugged in to power this PTZ camera. We've got HDMI cables, SDI cables, and we also have other network cables that we use for HD base T. Now we did that so we could run the monitors to the PC using HD base T instead of using HDMI cables. So running long runs of HDMI cables isn't great and the cables are expensive. So we thought we'd run HD base T for these monitors here. Now let's move on to the cameras. So we have one camera here. This is the Panasonic DVX 200 does 4K 60, has HDMI output, SDI output, does a whole lot of stuff that we need to do. Uh, we have some lights here. This is a, these are the kind of cheap B&H Generay LED lights that we use. Uh, have quite a few of them mounted around. In the middle here, we have a Panasonic PTZ AW UE 150KE. How's that? Uh, that's what it is. It's a ridiculous... PTZ camera that Martin really wanted to buy. It's completely ridiculous. And uh, it's 4K60, you know, so we can have three 4K60 cameras, which brings me along to the Panasonic DVX200 number two. So this is obviously another camera that we can use. So we kind of have three Panasonic cameras that we use, which is kind of handy for matching them. So we've got three fully capable 4K60 overkill cameras for our studio. And again, have a bunch of lights. This is a Cineroid one. Um, we had a few of those and they all kind of died. So yeah, that's how it is. So these are kind of mounted by Manfrotto clamps. Really good. You can just mount them and it gives you the ability to uh, secure quite a heavy load on those on the, um, the truss that we have. I think that's everything from around here. So we'll come around here and desk keyboard, mouse, mouse pad, XK124 T-bar. This is kind of where we do all the production. This thing, it's really hard to get proper chroma key green and do it right. So we just brought this with us. This works. So if they say, what is it? If, they, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So we just brought this with us and it seems to do the trick for us. A couple more lights. So this is all kind of hanging from this truss here and all going back through this cable tray. Now we do have a uh, teleprompter. So this is just a cheap teleprompter, an Australian teleprompter that we bought, I think from B&H or somewhere. Uh, just gives us the ability to see and read a script. Uh, if there was anything in this studio that I would take from a burning fire, it would be the teleprompter. I don't care about the cameras <laughs> and the computer. Not that I will. Should probably stop talking about fires. So anyway, um, we'll go around this side if you want to go that side. Oh, you're going to follow me around here. Okay. Storage. 
We have some things for studio stuff, as you can see by the sign on the box. Tons of cables. Um, I decided to clean up this area a bit, so I've got all of our external capture cards here, Blackmagic, Elgato, Majorwell, Yuan, you know, Epiphan, um, Bird Dog, AJ, Newtech, Enogeni. Have I dropped enough names? Yes, I think so. Just kind of clean that up, put that there, some Christmas lights, all that kind of thing. Now over here, this is the tutorial set. Now I kind of got sick of doing tutorials on our green screen set where I was just sitting there and staring at the camera and it wasn't very exciting. So I really wanted to have a tutorial set that could make it a little bit more interesting, you know, a little bit, it just looked a lot cleaner. So we kind of have this, the VMIX Funtime live show set over there and that's just for doing the monthly live show and any sort of green screen work, whereas this one is for m more of the tutorials. So it kind of separates those because we found that if I did a tutorial, I would mess a lot of things up and you know make changes and doing these weird tutorials and Martin would come in and um, he would yell at me, let's face it, that's exactly what he would be doing, he'd be yelling at me, uh, he would be cracking a whip, uh, a literal whip, a cat of nine tails that he keeps in his office for when um, we don't do the right thing. So it was, it was good to have that separation now that we have two different studios, whereas that one stays as it is, it's all prepared, ready to go for the shows, and this one over here I can mess around and play around with. So we have the wall of motherboards and GPUs as a backdrop. I didn't really know what to do, I'm not an interior designer, so I just put a bunch of stuff together. Obviously the banana LED and we just have some gear here, just a monstrosity of stuff that I can move around and kind of change the set look. RGB'd it out for days. Uh, we have uh, RAM RGB, we have case RGB. I think I can do the cooler RGB, I haven't just got around to it yet. Uh, banana phone, this is a i7 7700K with a 1080 Ti, so uh, it's only got one camera in at the moment, uh, so we have the Blackmagic 8K Pro in it, so it's, it can do 4K60 production on this one when I need to do it for tutorials when people demand that from me. Um, over here we have a coloured light, so we have a light here um, that we can dim and brighten and we can also change the colour of, so I can go ahead and add mood lighting depending on how I feel uh, and if I go over here and I switch the light off you can see it kind of stands out a little bit more it looks looks a little bit more dramatic so that's what we have on this side of things uh, we have a hair light here that kind of you know shines on my platinum hair which I do on a weekly basis to make sure I've got that gray hair desk keyboard we have a camera here, this is just a Lumens PTZ camera, it's always handy to have a PTZ camera lying around. And because we have hooked up our entire network to PoE+, Plus, I can plug in any camera and it's available on the network, it's going to turn on, it's going to work, everything's rigged up to NDI. So all of the face plates in the entire office, you can plug a camera into it if it's a PTZ PoE camera and I can do NDI so I can kind of plug a camera in anywhere and have it work, have it available on the network. So everything's all totally kitted out for NDI and networking, which is really awesome because we we're always plugging in cameras around the place. So yeah, here, just your basics. Uh, we have two 4K Samsung monitors here. And then we have this ridiculous camera. So we have an absolutely ridiculous uh, Blackmagic Design Ursa Mini Gen 2 because we can. Uh, it's completely ridiculous. It does, obviously it does 4K 60. Uh, we have a Sigma 18 to 35 mil lens on it and it gives you a really, really crisp picture out of it and it allows us to give get great depth of field on it as well. So completely overkill. Martin's like, yeah, we're gonna buy this. I'm like, okay, looks like I'm not gonna eat this week. Yeah, that's the camera that we've got. We have a teleprompter. Um, around here and we also have these lights here. So we have these two LEDs. These are just some basic B&H cheap Generate lights and we have a Deity shotgun microphone that we have because I was kind of sick of having microphones either via USB or having a headset microphone. I'm like, oh, I just want to put a mic there so I don't have to worry about it. It does occasionally pick up some PC noise. So I've put an NS1 filter on there from Waves, uh, which cuts that out. So instead of doing it properly, I've just rigged it with the ST3 plug plugins. So sometimes you kind of have to cheat and that's what I've done. So I think that's about it for the, uh, the vMix Studio. Is there anything else you can think of? 
Can't really think of anything else. It's been fun. Like I said, there's no real blueprint uh, and our studio is kind of completely overkill for most things that you'd want to do. It's, you know, we spent a lot of money, but that's just because we need to be able to test crazy things so you guys don't have to and you know that it's going to work when we say it's going to work. So it's kind of what we've done. Um, I'm sure we'll probably make some a few changes here and there. Um, if you do have any questions about anything, feel free to maybe drop us a comment if it's a nice comment. Maybe you can give us a suggestion of what we can call our studios. Overkill Studios has got a nice ring to it, but it's probably not the best. So if, you've, if you want to send us a, um, a, a comment there, or if you have any questions about vMix, you can send us an email via the contact page on vmix.com. And I think that's about it. So thanks for watching, and uh, we'll stream you later. Thanks for watching. Click to watch another exciting vMix video, or head to vmix.com for a free 60-day trial. See you later.